Oh, let's start with D4. Pearl Cat 7. Plays the knight out. Maybe he wants to play a Nimzo. We can do that. He does. Okay, go for the Rubenstein variation here. He pushes the pawn immediately, making it look more like a Queen's Gambit than a Nimzo, but it's okay. It's part of the system. I think I will defend the pawns with pieces. If I were to take, I would take with the C pawn, I suppose. But uh, it looks like he wants to take, so we'll let him do it. Oh, he wants to go after my uh, knight. So that was his idea, was to distract, distract my bishop so it wasn't uh, covering this square and try and put pressure on my knight. So he took. Yeah, if he takes again, it's an interesting question whether I should take with the C pawn or the E pawn. The E pawn, I could get into a hanging pawns formation, and I have the bishop here. Okay, he's, de he's attacking there. Let's defend with the bishop. This will force me to take with the e-pawn. If he takes, because uh, the c-pawn is pinned. Now I wonder if I could have snagged the knight there. The knight was hanging, but this move was with check. Right, so I go here attacking the knight and defending. He takes, I take back, he brings the queen out. Yeah, if I take if I take the knight here, he takes his pawn and wins a rook. So then he then he defended just in time defense. Okay, back to the game. Here we are. He doesn't believe in castling, <laughs> Mr. Pearlcat. <laughs> Mr. Pearlcat, what do you what do you think you're doing? So pawn here. If he takes it, I can take with the rook. If he pushes, I can put my bishop here. It gives my other bishop a little more scope. Maybe we can start to take advantage, open some lines and take advantage of the fact that he hasn't uh, castled here. Hmm, okay. So I take a pawn. I'm hitting his queen, but he takes a bishop and he's hitting my queen. I take back. Takes back. Weird. But I guess it works. Well, we can see that Pearl Cat is a very tactical player, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, that was the only way to avoid having me take that pawn, is to have me take this pawn. I mean, I, I was going to take with my H pawn here, so he pushed forward so I could take this way. Which one's better? I like this one better. It'll stop him from castling. He still can't take this pawn. Not that it seems like he wants to castle anyway. Yeah, how about I... Uh... Oh, I could just take this pawn.
Eventually he gets into trouble here, seems like. If the knight comes in, I can just take it. So I have to take there. I'm hitting this pawn now. He still can't castle. So I don't have to trade here. I could take the pawn and let him have my rook, let him have the exchange. Hmm, I wonder if that's good enough. Let's see. Bishop takes pawn, bishop takes rook, king takes bishop. It's his move. And he's got two knights. His king will be stuck there for a while, but I don't have a mating force. I'll be, I'll be down to one rook, which I could bring over and threaten to mate, but then he could, um, he could bring his uh, bishop out. Okay, so instead, let's activate the rook. Now I've got a nice check. I like that check. So he brings his uh, rick out, I, I mean his knight out. I can double. And uh, he still can't castle. Maybe we'll finally exploit this uh, weakness in his position. I have a back rank problem. <laughs> I should keep in mind that a threat to the back rank is a problem for me. Need one pawn move to uh, make an escape here. Make an escape route for the king. But if I manage to exchange off both his rooks, then it won't be a problem. So the threat is just rook to c8. Rook takes, rook takes, and then the king has to move, and then I can take this rook if I can't find anything better. So he defends with the knight. Does this still is it still possible to do something here? No, I have to I have to do something about that knight. He can't take this pawn. I am threatening to push. King comes forward, I can move my knight in with check. I am threatening to take this pawn. And uh, but I think it's even simpler to do this. Force him to move the knight. Ah, so that's a way to um, save the rook, I guess. Let's see. So I can check here. Where will the king go? The king will go here. I can check here. And take the knight. If I take the knight, he takes back. I have to move the bishop. Could just take the knight, he takes back. My bishop is hanging. Let's start with the check. My bishop can also take his rook. Maybe that's the simplest. Uh, 
Ah, so he goes there, but the knight, uh, oh, the knight comes in with check. But the, um, <clears throat> yeah, he's managing to hold it together. I, I can, uh, if I uh, take the knight, he takes back and I have to move my bishop somewhere. Guess it's okay. I might end up uh, in trouble with this bishop, but we'll see where he puts his rook. I have an idea here. <laughs> okay, my keep my back rank guarded. <laughs> That's one thing to keep in mind here. Yeah, this was my idea. If he brings his rook out, I can sacrifice this rook and take this rook with the bishop. Does that actually work though? And if he takes, then I take the rook, but what if he just moves? Where could he move? He could move back here well, then I could take this pawn and defend the bishop. Okay, so it does work. If he takes the rook, I take his rook. If he moves the king, I take this pawn defending my bishop. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got a piece and a pawn, a piece and a pawn. He has a passed pawn. Okay, we will start by giving myself a little room here to live. Now, I could just take that. Hmm, but I don't want to sacrifice the bishop. Oh, I see, he wants to go here. It's okay. He's just making things complicated, hoping to beat me on time, I guess. Okay, he's going after this pawn. Let's go ahead and take this one. <laughs> okay, he ran out of time. <laughs> I, I saw a nice idea here. <laughs> Suppose he takes this uh, with his rook. And I can play here with check. The king takes, or king could actually take the knight. And I take the knight, he takes, and I take here. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> he could take this knight, but I have an extra piece and should win that. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get a rapid game here. Boy, that was a toughie. I've had a series of tough games. Or so it seemed to me. Okay, well, we did d4 last time. Let's do e4. We get a other side of the Sicilian. So Matamor, you know, someone who is pretty highly rated, playing a hyper-accelerated dragon. Super-duper hyper-accelerated dragon. Not even bothering with the knights. Oh, there's a knight. Well, since we moved the knight, I could go back and defend with my knight and we get into more of a traditional dragon variation. Yes, I can bring my bishop out. He can't put his knight here yet because my queen covers that square. And this pawn is not moved. It 
Let's go ahead and uh, play this now, though. Defend the bishop. Ah, he knows. Yeah, you can try that now in this position. I think I take the pawn and then take the knight. But it's a tricky position. Let's go ahead and castle. So I can take here and mess up my pawns. On the king side. If he doesn't, I'm going to probably play bishop to uh, d4. Try and block this diagonal. So we've probably wandered out of theory by this point. At some point, this is a theoretical position somewhere around here. But I'm just not sure what the right thing to do is. Castling might have been a mistake. Might not have been the right move. So anyway, yeah, I want to put my bishop here, provoke a trade of his best piece. He can avoid the trade. No, not here. He can block with the pawn. Yeah, there's some weird tactics here. I can move my bishop to hit his rook. Take the knight. If I move my bishop to hit his rook, then he will, um, he will put the rook on the uh, d file there opposite my queen. Hmm, so... Bishop c5, knight d, or rook d8, defending the knight. The knight's kind of pinned, but I can't uh, easily attack it. I think I want to take the knight. So I take the knight. His queen will take. No, his pawn will take. Because his queen is under threat, so he doesn't have time to grab my bishop. After the pawn takes, then I could move my bishop somewhere. I have a good square to move it to, though. Back here. Maybe I should just move the bishop now. Maybe put it over here. Pin the pawn in the other direction. Now I'm thinking maybe knight here to here would be interesting. Also, I suppose I should find a, find a role for this bishop. And, you know, knight to, um, <clears throat> let's clear this all, knight to e4 would probably be met by f5. But then I go here with tempo. Hitting the bishop. And I can drop I can drop my bishop back here. Yeah, I thought he might do that. So now this uh is this, this knight is danger a danger and dangerously threatening to unleash itself. 
on my queen. Unleash an attack on my queen. I guess I can block with the bishop. Maybe that should be my next move. He's also mm, got an attack here. Through the knight. So when the knight moves, uh, I guess I'm losing my H, my A pawn. I could try and trap the bishop over there. Bishop takes a2, pawn to b3. Very dangerous way to play, though, that uh, would expose my king. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what he comes up with here. Yeah, there's a couple of good moves for that knight. I have to figure out where my queen goes. I think the queen has to go um, back here or here to stay in touch with the rook. Maybe not. The king's defending the rook. Let's keep that in mind. The king is defending, so don't know where where the queen will go. I suppose it depends on where he puts the knight. You know, queen, um, queen to c3 might be good, except that uh, then he's always going to have this uh, discovery, you know, pushing the f-pawn and the e-pawn discovered attack on the queen. That looks dangerous, too. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. Or maybe I leave the queen where it is and just bring the bishop out to... Bishop out to d3 to block the attack on my queen. Yeah, so this knight move, I'm not so sure about it now that I played it <laughs> because it undefended the uh, a2 square and I didn't really have a great, a great uh, plan for dealing with that threat. Didn't have a plan at all, actually, to be honest. I wonder if I can play. Oh yeah, now he's thinking about stuff. <laughs> now he's now I'm in trouble. He's thinking. So when I go here, he pushes the e pawn. It's an attack on. I go here. He pushes the e pawn. It's a, with tempo because it's an attack here. I could play um, c3 maybe. He could play knight c3, hitting, taking the pawn, taking that pawn, and uh, hitting my queen at the same time. Okay, first we eliminate the threat of uh, discovered attack by the knight. This will hopefully give me time to deal with this threat to b7. Yeah, I'm going to have to suffer here, it looks like. Takes the bishop I have to take with the pawn. Or he could take the A-pawn. I guess that's why he's hesitating here. Take the A-pawn. Yep, 
there he goes. Okay. So my plan was to go here. The knight goes back to c3, the knight can take. It goes back to b4, then my queen can move, and then I'll be able to retake here with the rook. He's developing a nice attack. Black is Black has been playing a good game here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Uh, check, king here. Then what? Check, king here. And knight takes here. Okay, so we'll start with the uh, knight move. So we'll stop the queen check. He may have a way to break through here. He can push this pawn with a double attack. That looks pretty good. Because my knight is loose here. But, uh, well, bishop takes pawn. And then my queen defends the knight. Pawn here, bishop takes pawn. Also, when he pushes that pawn forward, it's hitting um, the rook here. My bishop is hitting his rook. I'm also wondering about sacrifices on b3. But the move I'm expecting is really just uh, e5. And what are my options? Bishop takes pawn. Bishop takes knight, queen takes, and then he saves his rook. Or he just comes in and gives the check. But then I run and there's no follow-up that I see. Because my queen will be guarding the uh, a1 square. If my queen is here, it'll be guarding that square. So he gets one check, but then I run. Oh, so he runs with the queen first. That's interesting. Okay, where's a check? <laughs> Where is something? Let's start this way. He can exchange bishops here and then um, take this guy. Oh, he took that guy first. Ah, he can take there first because it is a mate threat. Yeah, now my queen is needed to defend here. And I also want to take the rook with my queen. Unfortunately, that doesn't look possible. So pawn takes knight, or pawn takes rook. What's he going to do? I have this uh, rook here. I think I have to take this way, but this is probably losing. I do have a check on the back rank if this rook leaves.
Yeah, I mean, his rook was hanging, but my queen was undefended too, so that was the problem. So I can bring my uh, rook out with tempo anyway. Maybe bring it up and over to uh, chase his queen away. So now he sacrifices. Still, so that's so great. Oh, it is good. I was going to say, can I just ignore that? But uh, he can go here. It's a discovered check, and then he wins my queen. Yeah, that was that was the thing I was afraid of all along that that discovered attack or not discovered attack that uh, sacrificial attack against my king position there it's, let's let him play it out let him find the moves but it looks good to me looks winning can take here with the rook and then take my knight Yep. I mean, it's only move. There might be a checkmate there, but this is probably good enough, right? If I run, he takes my queen anyway, so I might as well take. And uh, he's got queen and queen and bishop versus rook. <laughs> well, let's play a check. I have to play a check, then resign. Okay, so that was a good game. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Bye.